Hey guys, you still with Journey to Programming here. It's been a little while, but I've been posting recently about jobs and uh, the importance of being able to speak with your colleagues at a technical and non-technical level. And I recently did make a post about this, and I posted it on our website at journeytoprogramming.com, and I also reposted it over on LinkedIn. So if you're one of my followers on LinkedIn, or you, you pay attention to the articles that we, we normally post on there, then great, you've maybe come across it. And what I talk about in it is how it's extremely important to your career growth to be able to speak at a technical level and a non-technical level. And the reason for that is when you work a job, normally you're not only interacting with engineers and technical individuals, you end up having to speak a lot uh, to managers, directors, and artists, especially if you're in the creative field. But an example I brought into my article was, as a software developer, especially if you're in the games industry, so say you're a mechanics implementer or a game developer that makes mechanics is what I'm, I'm really talking about, if you're a game mechanic developer, then a lot of the time you're going to be implementing source code and you will be speaking at a technical level with your colleagues that are also developers and then your testers who uh, are at a more technical level, your test engineers, I guess, is the better way to explain that. But that's not all you'll do and those are not the only people you're going to communicate with. A lot of the times you're also going to have to communicate with your manager and you normally you'll directly report to them. They may or may not be technical themselves. Sometimes you also have to be able to communicate with your art team. And your art team isn't always the most technical. Maybe they, maybe they are, maybe they're technical artists and they have a little bit of a skill set that relates between engineering as well as being able to do the technical artwork. But you still need to be able to communicate with the non-technical people on those teams and your non-technical managers. You have to be able to relay where you're currently at on your project, any issues you've run into, and what you're currently waiting on. Is there something that's holding up your progress? Is there a red flag that the management team and the rest of your engineering team needs to know about? If there is, you need to be able to communicate that in a way that they understand and in a way that does not throw your manager into a state of shock or fear because perhaps you explained it incorrectly and they think the problem you're facing is an impossible task and all your timelines are going to be thrown off. Or maybe you explained it in too vague a way and you're, you're playing it off as though it's something you'll get taken care of really easily, but it's really something that's a big red flag and is going to cause your guys' deadlines to be uh, kind of missed. So you need to be able to understand how to communicate that. When you're starting out in the industry, when you're starting a new position, it's, it's difficult. You don't know how to communicate well to your management staff yet. You also don't know how to communicate the technical knowledge that you know or the technical problems you're facing with others that aren't technical yet because you just came, you just got into that role, you got into industry, maybe you're right out of college and you've only known technical information so far and that's just a skill you have to develop and the only way to develop it is you have to dive right in and be willing to speak to people that are not technical and I know a lot of people they jump in industry and they really just want to work with the engineering staff People that have been in industry for a while will tend to have their own opinions about management and about the non-technical folks that work at the company. But if you really look into a business and look at who's being really successful, if you look at the senior engineers, the people that get into leadership roles, the director of engineering, the director of other markets or other areas of your guys' company, you'll notice that those people have technical skills in their field, most likely because they were at a technical level or were working at a technical level in their position before they got to that leadership spot, and they're able to communicate well with people around them, non-technical as well as technical. So that should show you if, if you are trying to progress in your career, the most advantageous way to do that is to be able to communicate with others well. And for those of you that are just starting out in the industry, I cannot emphasize enough emphasize enough how important it is to work on these skills early and to prepare for working on these skills within your first few years of development. And 
as you develop them, your life is going to get so much easier when you decide to move on in your career, try to progress into a higher ranking position with more responsibility. If you're uh, just coming out of college and you're just trying to get a job, being able to communicate is key. One of the biggest factors in your interview process is always going to be how well do you communicate? Are you someone that I want to hire to be a part of my engineering team? The only way I'm going to know that is you have to communicate clearly at a technical level so I understand and know that you can do the technical work, but then you also have to be able to communicate on a non-technical level and those are really your just soft are, are just really your soft skills. They're your social skills. You have to be somebody that's likable. Okay, you don't have to hang out with everybody after work. You don't have to go out to lunch with them. You don't have to be their best friends, but you have to be likable. People have to be able to, to be able to walk up to you and talk to you about projects and you need to be able to clearly describe to them where you're at or any issues you're facing in a technical way, a non-technical way. I don't want to keep on reiterating the same thing. All I'm trying to say is you need to have well-rounded skills if you want to really progress in your career in any field. In software development, it's extremely necessary or it's um, basically required. If you want to become a leader, a leader in the industry, you need to be able to be clear in the way you communicate, you need to be likable, and you need to also have pretty well-rounded skills at a technical level. You need to be an engineer. You need to be a computer scientist. You need to be a good developer. And you can't just assume you're going to make headway and become a well-rounded developer and communicator without practicing. So you need to do that early. You need to practice often. And that's all I'm trying to get across in this chat. Again, I made a post on this um, maybe a week ago on the website, so Journey to Programming, and I also posted it over on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email or uh, use the actual link directly on the website. I think I have a contact form on there, which comes directly to me and the team, and we usually get back to you guys within a week, so feel free. Again, this is Issa with Journey to Programming. Have a good, have a good one, you guys.